What's going on everyone? This is Jay Patel and welcome back to another video on recurrent neural networks. Now in the previous video, we saw how the recurrent neural network looks like. We saw why cannot we use the uh, simple neural network for natural language processing task as well as we also saw the different types of recurrent neural networks. So if you haven't watched that video, you can find that video by clicking on the upper i button. We saw that the model architecture looks something like this where we pass one word at a time and it will produce one output as well as an activation and this activation will be feed on to the same network in the next timestamp. So for example when we pass the second word work we feed the activation from the previous timestamp to this timestamp and we will continue repeating this process until we reach at the end of the sentence. Now in this video, we will look at the mathematical details behind the RNN cell. We will see what goes behind this cell that looks like a neural network. And again, if you are new to this channel, consider subscribing and also hit the bell icon so that you get notified whenever I upload new machine learning video. And if you find this video helpful, then please do hit the like button, share it among your friends so that they can also be benefited from this. And let's not wait further and let's get riding with this video. Now in the last video, I told you that we pass one word at a time, but computer does not understand words. They only understand numbers. So we cannot pass this word Kelly directly to our model. So we need to convert this word into a number or a token. For this, what we can do is that we can create a vocabulary of words. Now this vocabulary will have all the words that are known to us, but we can limit our knowledge up to only 10,000 English words. For example, the first word in the, our vocabulary will be A, second word will be let's say Aaron and the last second word will be let's say Zebra and the last word is an unknown token which means that any unknown word that we encounter. Now let's say the word Kelly appears at a, some position 3, 4, 5, 6 and let's say the second word work appear at some uh, 8, 9, 8, 9th position. Now once we have a number associated with our words, we can feed them to our network. But we also need to convert this number into a one hot representation. One hot representation is a vector. Now all the value in this vectors will be zero except at the position 3, 4, 5, 6 which, is, which will be one. Now similarly the one hot vector for the word work will be given by this where all the values will be 0 except the value at position 8989 8, 9, which will be 1. Now we will convert the remaining words similarly into a one hot factor form. Now once we have converted our sentences into one hot representation we can feed them to our network. Now it's time to see the mathematical details behind one RNN cell. Now for the artificial neural network we know that the activation for the next layer is calculated by multiplying the weight with the activation of the previous layer adding a bias and passing that to an activation function. Now we will do the similar thing for RNN as well. Now for RNN the equation will be similar only but here we have two inputs. One input is the activation from the previous layer and one input is the x which is one word. Let's say our first word is Kelly then we know that we have converted this word into a one hot vector which will be of shape let's say nx comma 1 where nx is the vocabulary size. Here we had only one input and we multiplied that with the weight matrix but now as here we have two inputs we will multiply with the two weight matrices and the equation will look something like this. So the a from the previous timestamp will be multiplied with waa matrix which is a weight matrix and the input x which is this will be multiplied with the wax matrix and again we will add a bias and pass it to an activation function. So the RNN cell will look something like this we will multiply at minus 1 with waa and x with wax then we will add them both with a bias ba and pass it to an activation function. Now this will produce an output a t and if you know we also had the y output coming out from here as well. So the equation for the output y will be given by this where this a t which is the activation in this 
times them will be multiplied with another weight matrix WYA and added with a bias BY and passing it to an activation function which can be either sigmoid or softmax. And it will look something like this. So that's it. We only have these two equations for our one RNN cell and this is the more clearer representation of the same. So this is our one RNN cell and at every timestamp we will pass words from here which will compute some values for the activations and it will produce some output as well. So on a broader picture it looks something like this where we will be passing words here. And it will compute these activations which will be again passed to the same block in the next timestamp. Also regarding the naming convention, the name WAA, WAX, WYA are given such that this later character represent what quantity we are multiplying it with. So for example, this WAA is multiplied with A, that's why we have A here and this WAX is multiplied with X, which that's why we have X here and again this WYA is multiplied with a and that's why we have a here and the first character represent what it is producing for example this waa and wax are producing a while wya is producing y we also saw that for some applications like for many to one applications we do not have this output at every time stem but we only have the output at the final word after the final word so the architecture will look something like this. Let's say we are making a movie a rating system. Then we will pass the words here. And at every timestamp, it will feed the activation to the next timestamp, but it will not compute any calculation for the output here. But it will only calculate the output when it reaches the end of the word. Now there are other interesting things that we can know about this and that is that Instead of just having one cell in a recurrent neural network, we can keep two such cells. So for example, we will pass the words here. It will compute the activation A1 and this activation A1 will again be passed to the next cell in the same timestamp, which will then compute the output Y. So here at every timestamp, we are having two cells where here we have activation A1 which is passed to this cells and we have A2 which will be passed to these upper cells. So I hope you understood how the recurrent neural network model looks like in detail. Now in the next video we will look at the back propagation. We will get an intuitive idea about how the back propagation look like in a recurrent neural network. So if you found this helpful, hit the like button, share it among your friends and I hope to see you in the next video.